are listening to WHOA Podcast, coming to you from Gainesville, Florida. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the WHOA GNV Podcast, the podcast bringing you businesses and individuals that make you go, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Did you press record? I just want to make sure you press record. Yes. <laughs> okay. I press record. Really? I'm never going to live that down. <laughs> that make you go, whoa. I feel like mine's better. You have some work to do. I mean, you put me on the spot. <laughs> At least I came in on time. That was your time to shine. Right? I like that. <laughs> you guys, I am your host, Colin Austin, and this is my co-host, the modest, majestic, meticulous, mystical, and magnificent man of the hour, the Michael Dees. Ten points for alliteration. Oh, that, that was good. Great. <laughs> did I, was, that. I was riding that alliteration Genesis. wave. Genesis, perhaps. Yeah. Props to Genesis. Genesis. Good. There you go. Mike, what is up, Miraculous. dude? <laughs> Not much, man. I'm, I'm a little tired. I've been on the road for a bit, um, but I'm back. I'm here. Yeah, so so what, what's today? Today is July 9th. This goes out the first week of school. No, August 19th? Are, no, yeah. second week of school? Oh, oh, first week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, when first class start August 22nd. So, yeah, okay. it's the weekend oh, so the of week- back to school. Oh, yeah. So, this is like this when this like airs. Crunch time. Yeah, okay, it's a week crunch time. For when sure. This goes out. Yeah, yeah. All right, so, so you're trying to squeeze in that last minute vacation. Yes. Uh, and, and you, <laughs> can it even be classified as a vacation? No. no well, there's your baseball world tour? Well, there's no vacation anyway because the. The phone calls from the shop still come in, <laughs> so it's like I'm Turn driving. I'm driving on the phone with There's Angela, no with Anna. CEO. You know, it's and I found out that all these states that, that I was driving through are, are now hands-free states, mm. so you can't even really talk on the phone or anything, mm. or you're not supposed to. Oh. So that was challenging. Really? Yeah. Like there was one time I was literally on the phone with Angela, and I drove by a trooper and dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> Like five minutes later, I'm like, oh, sorry, I forgot about it. You can send that ticket to Michael D's at 633 Northwest 13th Street. No. So how was it, man? Was it cool? It, it was good. You uh, went it was to really four good. baseball games. Four, four parks in four days. Give uh, us the run through really yeah, quick. Yeah, real quick. So we did Atlanta on Tuesday, Cincinnati on Wednesday, Pittsburgh on Thursday, D.C. on Friday. Oh, wow. Um, so that was a real quick trip, about 2,100 miles in all. We did vlog the whole thing. You did? Yeah. So, I'm so proud. So I'll be uh, interested to see how that turns out, but uh, it, it was it was a blast. It was a really good time. Uh, some good baseball, some good memories. Uh, we learned all the words till we didn't start the fire, which will be a good little Easter egg on the <laughs> <laughs> on the vlog. Oh, you put that on the vlog? Oh yeah, that's great. Yeah, no, it's good. I can't wait to release it. It'll be fun. Were you guys just uh, watching baseball, or do you have family member? Oh no, yeah, we're just watching. Oh, just so, watching. Cool. So the the real quick story is like I think it was probably. 10 or 12 years ago, there was a MasterCard commercial, really branding, right? That was like the priceless. So two tickets to a baseball game, $40, a tank of gas, this much, you know, a road trip with your friends, priceless, right? Mm. And these two kids just went on this like baseball road trip for a summer. And my best friend and I were like, man, I really want to do that one oh, day. Cool. And so we've been talking about doing that for so long. Um, and we did four. <laughs> there it is. Uh, but, but it was kind of like the first start of it. So yeah, right. solid. Yeah, but it was, it was fun, yeah. Just well, dude, let me introduce to yeah, you our guest for the day. Why, the reason we're really here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, so you know, we we start this conversation, this pre-show conversation, and then like they they chime in talking about baseball, and then it's I'm like, like, who are I'm these like voices? everybody, everybody who's listening is like, who's there? I wonder, yeah. I wonder who's on the show today. I hear them talking, and I see them, <laughs> but it's all good, you guys. Let me introduce to you our guests today. We have Jose Nieves and Miguel Cardona, co-founders of Brio Cold Brew Coffee in the house. And in great fashion, they brought cold brew for us to drink, and it's freaking Ooh, delicious. We're getting this jacket. Check this morning. out. Check this out. Look at this little glass. Cheers. Where'd you guys get these little glasses? We brought man? we brought some this shirts is, as well. What? Oh, yeah. Yes. Those. What guys, size is some, uh, some medium? Large, large, yeah. large for me. Medium and a large. Yeah. We brought yeah, one of each. Dude, you guys are awesome. Came prepared. You come with coffee and swag. You got yeah, yeah, that's, that's good. Dude, there dude this is. stuff is so good. Look at this little glass, guys. Medium for oh, Mr. Beautiful. Mike. Look at this, look at this bottle. Shirt. Look at this thing that it comes awesome. in here. It's it's large cool. for Monsieur. I love, I love it. Everybody goes oh, with the thanks, soft man. feel shirts, too. Yeah, oh, you, you, have have to. you have to. Nobody's going to wear if it's like that. Oh, for sure. The best. Hard cotton. Looks nice. Feels good. Thank you guys. Well, thanks for that, guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, sure. welcome Pleasure. to the show. Thanks for waking up early with us. Are you guys morning people? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. We've, we've had ever since, you, ever since you started <laughs> coffee, coffee company. company. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm a morning person now. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I like the mornings. It's nice. Like, you know, wake up early, kind of feel a little recharged. Yeah. Depending on how you slept. Mm-hmm. We, uh, for, for a good period there, we're really morning people. We're going to the gym at 5.30 in the morning, 
and then I feel like there's there's only so much of that you can do you know before you start going to bed at 8 9 10 11 p.m. midnight and next thing next thing you know you're back to your you know 8 30 in the morning routine but for yeah for a moment there we're doing 5 30 5 30 oh, mornings sure. for for about like six months mm -hmm. yeah yeah see I was doing the 4 30 routine Ooh. and it lasted a quarter I was gonna say you got I, I did. Okay. I did okay. I just and you went from what from an eight thirty, seven thirty, what till like what time I went to bed? Or no, what, what time were what you time doing were you before? Usually? Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. I would say normally like seven, eight. Okay. Seven. So like, yeah. I mean, the the m the whole idea, right? Is like, all right, let me get a jump start on the day. Mm -hmm. Let me get the workout in. Let me do all that. But man, it's just it's just so hard. I found that by like Thursday and Friday, I was just so exhausted. Mm -hmm. And my problem is that I stay up too late. Yeah, right? yeah. I can't get in bed by nine o'clock. Yeah, like, exactly. There's, yeah. there's times I don't leave here until nine o'clock. Right. So it's like, it was just super, super hard. And, yeah, yeah. And I feel like seven, eight's more sustainable. I mean, I, I found that I, I found that I could stay up till midnight and still get up at seven. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like, oh, for sure. So like, yeah. that was fine. But that's probably what we end, that's that's kind of what we end up doing because we've got friends and so we always end up catching up at the end of the day. Everybody comes over the house and. We hang out for a little bit, crack jokes on each other, and that's kind of like the, the post a day, nightcap. yeah, a little nightcap, and then and then yeah, next thing you know it's midnight, but it's it's fine to wake up at seven a.m. and get the day going. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, oh, sure. cool. Well, so you've seen our format, right? So we like mm -hmm. to start with the origin story, kind of hear how yeah. you guys got into this yeah. thing, and and then of course we want to ask you a bunch of questions, find out where you're at now. So so sure. why don't you throw us back to your startup story? Yeah. So I guess I can uh, introduce the friendship and then go Yeah, 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 go ahead. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so uh, it all starts uh, first day of third grade. Uh, <laughs> really? Yeah. This is true? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, true first story. first day of third grade. <laughs> Great. Um, All right, I'm gonna start calling you guys the Brio Brothers. Th there it is. There we we go. go by the many Brio names. Brothers. <laughs> the, the, the Brio Brothers from another mother. The Brio Boys. The Brio, Brio, Brio Boys. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Since third grade. Um, yeah, so third first day of third grade. Uh, little little old Brown Miguel was sitting uh, by himself. They didn't know much English. Uh, then Jose comes in. Uh, he didn't know any English, so he was crying. I was terrified. And naturally, they sit us next to each other and say, "You know, figure it out, guys." <laughs> um, yeah, and so we they sat us next next to each other. Uh, Jose asked me how to say sharpener in in English, and I told him. And and then uh, yeah, that was the beginning of of a uh, of of the friendship. Um, you know, we, we had our ups and downs. We fought over a girl in fourth or fifth grade. Fourth third grade. grade. Third grade. Same year. Yeah, yeah, we both had a crush on the same girl and got into a fight. Um, we went like I think we had a six month hiatus on the friendship over this girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We <laughs> talked for like six months. Yeah. Uh, and so there, <laughs> each other. there was finally a peace treaty that was signed <laughs> around that Christmas Dude, time. Yeah. Third grade love, man. I yeah. mean, it's, it's a real thing. It's rough. It's I, I remember so I brought her roses. I brought roses. <laughs> what did you, you bring her? He made the move. He was sharpening uh, her pencils for her. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, don't, I don't think I brought her anything. I think that was, that's, that's why I was mad. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so Miguel won. So won. he made the move, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll show the sore loser. Yeah, um, <laughs> but yeah, so we both grew up in, in Ocala. Um, you know, since since we're friends uh, from such an early age, our, our parents were also friends. Um, so we would uh, hang out with each other's families. Um, and and yeah, I mean that that kind of goes into into the the story of Brio. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Basically, you know, good friends all the way through. You know, middle school, high school, and then graduated high school. And then uh, Miguel wanted to study architecture. Um, That's a terrible idea. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, all, it was all uh, the emails come in from seat. architecture people. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I went to uh, I went to USF originally for joke, two years. Joke, joke. My archie friends, don't kill them. <laughs> No, Sorry, they're all over, they're all over the, the, the place now. But yeah, so I went to USF for two years uh, to study architecture. Um, being from Ocala, I didn't want to come to Gainesville. I thought it was too close. All my friends were going here. I wanted something different. Um, so yeah, so I went to USF for two years and then realized they only had a, a master's program and not a bachelor's in between. So you're doing a four-year master's. And I was like, eh, I'm kind of over Tampa. So I came to Gainesville to finish up my architecture degree here. Uh, and then I did in 2015. Yeah. yeah, and Jose was up in culinary school. Yeah, so I graduated basically by the time I was 15 years old. I knew I wanted to uh, be in the food industry and, and become a chef. Um, so I graduated high school and I moved up to New York uh, to Hyde Park, New York, and I attended the Culinary Institute of America up there. And uh, 
lived in New York for a total of six years, jumped around upstate in the city, uh, Greenwich, Connecticut, and that's actually sort of where the cold brew coffee thing started to evolve. Um, graduated uh, from the Culinary Institute, and I actually got fired from my very first job out of culinary school. So I was like, man, I was like super disappointed, and I've always had an entrepreneurial spirit. Why did you get fired? Um, <laughs> I wanted well, to know the real stuff. It's just, it's just <laughs> things weren't going well. I wasn't enjoying it. Um, I don't remember exactly the details. The, the oh, vanilla. actually, yes, yeah. actually, yes, yeah. Um, so I actually got fired for putting um, Gosling's dark rum inside of whipped cream that was later used to garnish a smoothie that was served to a, a, a minor. <laughs> yeah, and so, I mean, as, as I You can send that ticket to <laughs> uh, Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I, it, was, it was a very chef move because we didn't have any vanilla extract and the vanilla extract is already an alcohol solution. So I was like, all right, well, let me substitute this delicious dark rum um, and, and put it in there to you know, make it tasteful. Mm -hmm. um, and then that, that, was, that was it. That was it not yeah. supposed to be for the smoothie? It was supposed to be for something else or it was? No, it, it was. Okay, yeah. so you, yeah. you knew that. The yeah, I was fresh okay. out of corner school. It was very like, ah, oh, I got this. Like, <laughs> no vanilla extract. I'll make it good either way. You see, this is what we do on the podcast. We make you go through memories uh, that, you yeah, have, yeah, that you yeah. haven't thought about in years yeah, and yeah, go yeah. into <laughs> deep detail about <laughs> that's that, right. that, that experience. That's right, I to a minor. That's yeah. why I got yeah. That's right. I do remember that one. I remember that one. Yeah. But, uh, I, I do remember that now. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, yeah, I'm like reliving that moment right now. But the mom freaked out, and it was it was a country club with uh, up there in Grange, Connecticut, and and um, but yeah, that was uh, got fired. And I said, so you know what, what year was that? That was in 2014, late two, 2013, 2014. I don't, mm -hmm. um, okay, it was summer of 2013, actually, to be exact. Um, and I was like, man, that's it. Like, I don't want to work for anybody ever again, like I'm not, I'm not made for this, I don't wanna do it, I wanna start my own business. And so I got one of my buddies from culinary school and I was gonna actually start a, a burger restaurant um, up there with him and I spent, we spent together three months on that project um, to kind of realize that it didn't really make a whole lot of sense financially to the investment, it was, to, the risk was too high. Um, so we kind of called that off after three months and by that time I was, had been unemployed for six, seven months with no income, my student loans were gonna kick in. So I was kind of freaking out and I needed some kind of income to kind of get me going and, and get my life started. Uh, so I applied to a bunch of jobs out there. I was living upstate um, and one of my friends at the time was working at the local Starbucks. And I, I went in there, she was like, listen, just you know, come in, I'll make sure you get a job. And I was like, I just needed anything. And yeah, sure enough, she gave me a job uh, making a 50 an hour as a, as a barista at Starbucks. And I was like, man, like, graduated from one of the best culinary schools in the world, uh, have my bachelor's in restaurant management, hospitality, and like here I am, like entry level job at Starbucks. I was like, man, this is not how my life like is supposed to go. But it was right then and there where I kind of developed a passion for coffee um, on, a, on a product level ingredient, uh, started learning more about it. Starbucks has a master's coffee program that I started kind of dabbling in. And on the business side, I was actually working the drive-through and just the clients just kept coming in and, and like hardcore regulars and they would spend the same amount if not more every day at the same time and not even like think about it. And so like the entrepreneurial side sort of kicked in. I was like, this is a great business. In restaurants you have your regulars, but not like you do in a coffee shop setting. So that attracted me on a product ingredient side, culinary chef level, coffee really started sort of enticing me and I started watching YouTube videos, reading up on coffee, to the point that around 2014, 14, I kind of just committed. I was like, you know, I wanna, I wanna be in the coffee industry. Um, at that time, I was kind of enticed by the idea of being a, a green coffee buyer, which you kind of travel the world, uh, finding the best coffee beans uh, out there. And so I was like, sounds perfect. I get to travel, like taste amazing coffee, like cool job. Um, and I kind of just committed. I moved down to uh, Brooklyn because I couldn't afford to go to uh, Portland and Seattle because uh, I only had a little bit saved up. Um, and I kind of immersed myself in the, in the New York City coffee scene fully, going to cuppings as, as often as I could, going to every single coffee shop until I got a, a job with a coffee shop roaster up there. Um, and I kind of started learning the ways and, and I spent a year in the city. And after that, I was like, Miguel and I had been sort of talking back and forth. I was up there for six years away from my family. And I kind of just wanted to come home, reconnect and recharge because I was working seven days a week. And that's when I, uh, the whole Brio idea kind of 
sort of came in, in, into fruition. I, I pitched it to Miguel, and he was like, Keynes was great, it's affordable. I was paying like $1,000 uh, a month in rent. Uh, he told me what, what I'd be paying here. Uh, so it was kind of an easy decision to come here and kind of sort of, you know, get this brio idea figured out. Um, and, and, you know, at worst, I try to start, you know, being an entrepreneur and, 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 and working for myself. Um, so yeah, moved down to Gainesville December 1st, 2015. By January 2016, we had the very first uh, Brio uh, logo draft, and, and Miguel was, was uh, pretty much all about it. He was kind of lingering in Gainesville, kind of trying yeah, to figure I, life out. I was sort of uh, in a similar boat where, you know, ever since I started college, I've always been, uh, I mean, really ever since I was a, a kid, I've, I've always been, you know, pretty, uh, pretty good at like selling. Uh, in high school, I was making shirts with uh, with spray paint and selling those. In college, I was cutting hair in the in the in the bathroom, uh, the dorms. Uh, and then throughout college, I started doing photography as well. Started doing wedding photography. Uh, so when I graduated school, I still had some photography contracts lined up. Um, so I wasn't in such a rush to get out of Gainesville. Um, so I was kind of hanging out. My rent was super cheap. Uh, you know, I was making decent money from. I mean, for for a college kid with no no uh, responsibilities, uh, so I was kind of yeah I was kind of living a life of leisure in Gainesville, <laughs> and I kind of uh, sold the the dream to Jose, and and he moved down, um, and yeah we started working on Brio right away. I commit you know we both committed 100 percent to it, um, and and yeah it took us yeah. about two, two we worked on it for about two years, uh, working on the, the the brand identity the the logo. Um, selecting the bean, the flavor profile that we were wanted to, uh, you know, to capture. Um, and Putting money on the size. Like yeah. I was, I was actually working. Uh, moved down. And I started working at Dragonfly. Uh, so I was working there five, six days a week, and then at night, Thursday, Fridays, and Saturdays, I would Uber to make a little bit. You know, have a little side hustle to put into Brio. And uh, it took us about two, two and a half years to kind of put everything together. We we took our time. We, we wanted to make sure that um, the product itself was was appealing visually, and that's sort of where Miguel's expertise comes in. Um, and then uh, on a coffee level, uh, using my contacts to, to find a very delicious coffee that will stand out from other cold brew uh, coffees. And so we actually chose a bean variety that's very fruity, has natural notes of pomegranate, cranberry, blackberry, and lemongrass, and it's almost iced tea-like. And the idea with that is to, you know, it naturally stands out because most cold brew coffees are kind of like Chocolatey and caramelly, mm. uh, but Brio is, is on the fruity side and kind of just play on the on the southern vibes of, you know, people down here like iced tea and to kind of use that as a as a little little reference, you yeah. know, a little little charm. Um, but yeah, and so that was two thousand, the end of two thousand fifteen. You said. Yeah, so I moved down December. Yeah, so so basically uh, January uh, of two thousand sixteen. That's kind of when we started, sort of. You know, taking it from an idea to like, all right, well, let's let's play around with a logo, and you know, let's. And I was at that point, I started making basically cold brew once a week or so, and 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 kind of just getting friends to come over and and tasting. And I and it started very small. I had a little Hario hand mill grinder, um, to, and we had we actually uh, pass it back and forth because. I was making about a gallon at a time, and like your arm yeah, gets tired. Yeah, yeah. So I, don't know, like, I don't know if you guys know this, but you know that I had a coffee company for a couple of years. I think you mentioned it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I like I'm familiar with some of that yeah, process. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and Brad, Brad, Brad yeah. used to run it, my brother. And um, I mean, like when I when I first got into it, it was called Gulejo Coffee, mm -hmm. and it was it was subscription based. But we, like we sold it by the bag, mm. okay. So it was mainly like going to businesses and sold it, and you know we we actually worked out of I don't know if they're still there, the Blue Kitchens Incubator, uh, Blue Kitchen, the, they, South Main Street. Yeah, is it still there? No, they sort no. of evolved into evolved, okay. working food, which is yeah, yeah. Well, we were, that's kind of where we had like our license and everything was kind of based oh, nice. there. And then, yep. So, uh, but it's definitely a, a very interesting. Business. I loved it. The thing I miss most about it is the coffee. <laughs> right. It was having right. access to coffee. coffee. It was yeah. a really, really good coffee. But nice. Um, yeah, it's, yeah. That's, a, that's it's, the biggest perk. You just have coffee readily available. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know? Yeah, I remember passing that little hand mill around. We're like, pass the grinder to the left. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you were babysitting that, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, su super humble beginnings. Uh, <clears throat> so, like, let's talk about that a little bit because, I mean, I, so we, we we are very intentional about trying to keep a very 
you know unique mix of guests coming on, right? Like we, have, I mean, it's, it's all across the mm-hmm. board. Um, but it's been a while if if we even have really kind of dove into like into startup life, mm-hmm. if you will, like those first steps, right? Like what were like what was the first thing? You know, you said this is December 2015, and then January 2016, you're like, all right, we're gonna do this. Like, what was the first step that you guys took? Um, yeah, so I, besides, uh, you know, working on, on the identity, I mean, uh, I think the logo was was probably something that, that we would spend a lot of time on uh, for the first year, year and a half. Uh, and, and like Jose said, you know, working on the flavor profiles. Uh, but once we got, once we had a product that we, you know, we could hold in our hands and, that was probably late 2016. August, yeah, yeah, August. 2017. Yeah, 2000, yeah, yeah. Late 2016, we had a product, you know, prototype that we can hold in our hands, and and it was the first time we we could see what we've been working on for for two years, you know, because before that, it was on my computer screen, or it was, you know, we we're drinking out of cups and and tasting it. Um, so for the first time, we had a, a product that we could hold, um, and so after that, it was just okay. Now, how do we how do, how do we become an actual business after that? Um, mm-hmm. So a lot of it was just figuring out, um, you know, what, what are the first steps in becoming uh, an LLC? And so that was, you know, a couple steps here. And then, okay, what permits do we need? And then go here and they send you over there. And so there's, it was interesting because there's not a checklist of items that you can just go one by one. It's like, this is how you become a business. It's kind of, you go one place and they give you a, you know, a runaround and, and um, so that was actually, I, I would say, from August up until uh, April when we, you know, we made our first sale, uh, April 2017. Mm-hmm. Um, so between August and April, we're figuring out bank accounts. We're figuring out, um, you know, and this whole time we've been self-funded. Um, you know, credit cards were, were, were you know, as I was maxed out. I was, I was still Ubering. I was no. still, uh, you know, trying to book weddings. Um, and so at this point, um, yeah, we're, we're figuring out how how we can get selling, you know, because we needed some kind of revenue from from that. So yeah, it took us from August to about April to finally get through all the red tape. Um, and then we made our first delivery to uh, the Daily Green on April 11th. A- yep, April yeah. 11th of last year. And But I, I would say the, the, the thing that lo- took us the longest was just kind of the creative process of, of, you know, we had the name. Um, initially, we were actually considering, well, in my head, it, it was gonna be a horse. And that was kind of inspired from Ocala, because I grew up on a horse farm, and that's you know where the word brio sort of originated for me. Um, it was a word that my father used to say a lot, because um, I was you know the oldest male in a Latino you know household, so I was expected to like be his right you know right hand man and kind of help him on the farm and, uh, and do all these types of chores. And he always used to say that whatever you do in life, you do it with brio. And I kind of took that with me, and and you know, Tammy, it was the idea, you know, that you, you do something, you do it with passion, energy, uh, and, and love, and like you mean it, you know, no matter if it's you cleaning stalls or washing dishes, you know, you, you do it like like you want to do it and like you care. And I took that word with me, and so initially it was going to be a, a horse, and then I think on on a drive down to Tampa <laughs> one day, we're just like. I think the rooster idea somehow <clears throat> came up and the logo yeah, kind of started to get it more defined. Yeah, yeah, it was one of those kind of like trigger points where it was like, it's gotta be a rooster, man. Yeah. <laughs> and and, uh, and yeah, it sort of switched directions from there. It kept evolving the colors and, and even the shrink band too, that was actually a happy accident because you know, we we're sort of starting this whole process like, all right, what bottle are we gonna put in? It's gonna be plastic, it's gonna be glass. Uh, you know, label, how's it gonna look, what colors? And uh, we actually um, initially thought that a black shrink band will look good on it, you know, just kind of just seamless, clean and black. And then the company that we we're getting some samples from at the time didn't have a black shrink band that fit the cap size, so they sent us a red one. And I remember getting, I remember this day pretty vividly, I remember getting the shrink band, I'm like, it's my first time that I'm about to shrink band a bottle. Um, and I put the shrink band on, I go to my bathroom, I whip out the, the hair dryer, that was probably already out. Cause yeah. <laughs> <we're doing. laughs> and uh, I kind of, you know, it starts sealing. I kind of just look at the bottom. I'm like, oh, that looks really good. And I yeah. go out to the kitchen. I'm like, yo, check this out. And that's sort of like how the red train band sort of came about, um, which which most people like. Um, and I think it adds a nice little little touch to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think kind of some, you know, sometimes it happened organically, but I'll say the, the process of, you know, we wanted to make sure that it was very beautiful. Um, and, and attracted you as a consumer. 
Um, and then from there, the coffee portion of it was kind of just understanding the coffee bean, working out the ratios, the water, the time, just a lot of experimenting and, and whatever we made, we just had all of our friends and family try it and get their feedback. Um, and, and, and yeah, until we're finally kind of just happy with, with, with all the numbers, the recipe, and, and had, a, had a product that we felt that was visually attractive. Um, and yeah, from, and, and that's what so we- So when did uh, you get like your first sale? Yeah, so that was uh, April 11th to the Daily Green. Okay. Um, that was our first sale. Um, and, and yeah, we started rolling. Uh, four months uh, into, into the sales process, uh, we had developed a pretty strong uh, and aggressive sales strategy. Um, we were basically doing sales, um, you know, five. Almost every day. Yeah, like almost we were working every day seven days a week. And, and yeah. our goal when we started off was to make it available because we knew students were coming back in August. Uh, so we moved pretty aggressively, um, and uh, yeah. Yeah, between April and August, we had uh, established about 60 retail partners in Gainesville. Um, and so that was the first the first four months in business was uh, just hardcore sales. Uh, once August came, uh, we sort of slowed down on sales, and then uh, at that point, we sort of shifted towards uh, marketing uh, the product more. Um, and, and, and that was, uh, yeah, the duration of, of basically the whole f the f fall, uh, we were just demoing, um, you know, five five times a week, farmer's markets, uh, demoing at Ward's supermarket, demoing at Lucky's. Any events um, that and, came up, yeah. you know, where there was a good we're opportunity. We're actually here. ROI. Uh, yeah, demoing, yeah, 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 that's yeah. right, during back to school yeah. time. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, and just like like you see here, we have a little, little sales backpack that we carry with us as, you know, everything we need, and you know, we show up, you know, say hi, introduce ourselves, and right there, and most people are kind of okay if, if you offer them coffee. Yeah. Uh, and so we, you know, start pouring samples and tell them a little bit about, you know, the product or story and sort of what we're trying to do. Um, so you know, that was, was that the best lead generation for you guys? Yeah, we're just like, showing up, knocking on doors, yeah. Yeah, so we, um, it was 100% just door to door sales. Mm -hmm. and, and Miguel, you know, so I had some sales experience and I did some sales when I was in New York City. Uh, and I was a coffee sales rep up there too uh, during the day. So we both had some sales experience and sort of we were comfortable with kind of just showing up and, and, and introducing ourselves and, and, and making the pitch. So is it just you two guys right now? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. we've got uh, about a group of, of interns as well. Uh, we started the internship program last fall. Um, and so we had about three interns last semester, and uh, I'm sorry, fall semester, about three interns in the spring semester as well. Um, and so that they've been, you know, it's been uh, an awesome experience because um, it's our first time actually working and, and delegating and, and teaching and educating and sharing. Um, and so that's been a really cool experience as well. But um, yeah, they help us uh, with production, they help us with, with demonstrations. Um, and we also do special projects with them. So depending on their major, what they're trying to do, um, you know, we're making sure that they're having an impact in the company. And so they've helped us um, creating uh, our keg program, which we just rolled out. Um, they helped us uh, with, with social media. They're helping us with um, Paul, inventory. You, you say keg. <laughs> yeah, keg stands with coffee. You ready? <laughs> Perk. <laughs> oh, for our third uh, gift. <laughs> yeah. Yes! That's you get a awesome. gift. You get a gift. Everybody get a gift. gets I'm about a keg. To go, I'm about to go Woo. Oprah on you guys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, you can drop off kegs yeah. at Cold Brew anytime you want. There it is. Only, only if That's you do cool. a 10 second keg stand. <laughs> oh my gosh. Bring I would do it challenge on, accepted. I would do it on the podcast. <laughs> on bring, camera. Uh, bringing back the college don't, memories. Don't even mess. Tink, tink. <laughs> bring back the calculator incentive for the team so we can finally get one. <laughs> right? And well, we, we, we talked about, uh, we had that as a goal. Yeah. We just if, didn't if, I think goal. it was a, a service department goal. If they hit a certain amount of revenue or contracts we or something, we were going to buy a kegerator. Oh, let's oh, go. Um, yeah. Just for shop function or something like that. But now we can have one for beer coffee. and one for coffee yeah, or maybe uh, just yeah. the one for coffee for legal <laughs> just the one for coffee yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> scratch uh, that uh, <laughs> uh, um, there's never scratching anything on this podcast there it is. everything just goes there it is I like that sorry um, mom <laughs> yeah that's that's something cool for those that we, times that go, it goes just sorry mom for those times roll, that it just rolls it. out there yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just, funny we just got our so I mean talk about like some of the like what's been the biggest challenge so far right like yeah. I mean you're <clears throat> what two years mm -hmm. three years in uh, uh, 14 months 14 months 14, 14 months, okay. 14 yeah. months in and um, 
Yeah, I would say the the biggest challenge has probably been, uh, you know, we've we've been self funded this whole time. You know, we've mm-hmm. we've taken some some loans from from friends and family. We've, um, um, but for the most part, we've been pretty underfunded for our ambitions. You know, we we want to go nationwide with the product, um, and and we we have the drive to to do that as well. But I would say our biggest challenge has been uh, fundraising. Um, it's it's just such a complicated thing to do uh, and and it takes a lot of time and energy and first learning about all the terms neither of us went to business school or or anything like that so uh, the whole idea of fundraising is completely new to us so uh, so we've been learning a lot they of don't them. teach you that in business school so don't worry oh okay oh, there <laughs> it is yeah <laughs> I mean we YouTube a lot yeah <laughs> YouTube and Google yeah Google like. is it's fine like, for all that stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I don't like one of them. And we have great mentors, too. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to keep yeah. throwing school under the bus. All right, yeah. so we've got I mean, I, I school of architecture uh, sending an angry email school. Business is sending an angry email school. Yeah. But, like, look, like, I love... Uh, I loved my time at school, but mm-hmm. but they never taught us that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, and and I don't. And honestly, I, I mean, kind of circling back, I don't know if they if they should. I mean, yeah. I mean, when it comes to to fund, and actually, let's have that discussion because I'm kind of interested now. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, what? Why do you want? I mean, do you want to sell part of your company? Like, um, do you so, want to fundraise? So that's like, part of the. I mean, is it just yeah. because of growth? You just think you can scale faster? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, over. I, Part of the reason is, is sort of taking us a little bit longer to fundraise because we, we haven't wanted to sell part of the company yet. Um, and there's several reasons to that. First, um, we, we think that with at the rate that we're going, we can we can still make pretty uh, big steps to increase the, the value of the company. For example, uh, we, we just went statewide with Whole Foods. Um, we've been able to do that you know, self-funded. Um, matter of fact, we're leaving at, at 2 a.m tomorrow morning yeah. or you know tonight to go do our second delivery to Whole Foods. So we're, we rented a truck, we're going down to Sarasota um, and, and we're, we're doing our second delivery. So little things like that, that will help us build the value of the company without, before we, we you know, have to give up a chunk away away. Um, and so that's, that's been the, you know, the main thing. But yeah, um, the, the second part is that we're sort of capped out on, on production. We're still hand bottling, uh, we're still hand dating, hand doing, the, doing the shrink band by hands. Um, so, um, but the, do you need to raise capital for that? Yes. Uh, so you know, to to go into a uh, semi-automatic equipment, that means we need our own space. We're still working out of Working Food Kitchen, which they've been amazing. Shout out to to Working Food. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, so we're renting a kitchen hourly. Um, so we need to go into our own spot. We need to invest in some semi-automatic equipment, uh, which you know that that can run you know fifty thousand dollars for for some something like that. So my um, question is like, why can't why not like just focus on making the company profitable and then going out and getting a loan from a bank for that stuff or you know borrowing that money versus yeah, that's, selling that's, the equity. That's an option as well. You know, we've we've uh, utilized our credit cards in the meantime. Um, we've utilized friends and family. Um, the thing is that for for our we've got like, you know a, a five year strategy, um, and then part of that strategy to become profitable includes us you know going uh, statewide with Lucky's, going statewide with Publix. And for us to be able to do that, we need to be able to keep up with production. Um, so it's like it's it's been that game of what do you you know which one do you put first? Because uh, if you <clears throat> buy more than you can chew and you end up in a situation when you can't produce enough to meet the demand, then you're shooting yourself in the foot. You might be in a situation where, you know, you, you can't fulfill, you know, a, a reorder or something like that. And, um, and I'm, so, so, I'm yeah. sorry, I just had a, this thing come to my head where you said buy it off more than you can chew. Mike has a, screen, <laughs> Mike has a screensaver that pops up that says buy it off more than you can chew and chew it. There it is. <laughs> yeah, and that's, and that's what we've been doing. Yeah, when we received the first order from, from Whole Foods, uh, it was it was a bigger order than we were anticipating, and so we we were like, all right, let's let's do this. And we were for a whole month straight, we we're spending about twelve to sixteen hours in the kitchen hand bottling, yeah, um, and hand dating. So you know that's that was insane because the month of February. I mean, we can even go into that alone, but oh, the month crazy. of February was was insane. We had the uh, so I started the month off by, and I don't want to put any sad vibes out there, uh, but I had to put my dog down in the, at the beginning of the oh. month. Uh, three or four days later, we received the Whole Foods order. Maybe I think I think Chief sent us that that blessing from Dog Heaven. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we got the the order from Whole Foods. 
uh, and then uh, two weeks into the month, we had our, our uh, North Florida startup competition. Yep, North Central uh, Florida is, startup which, challenge, which is a, a pitch a pitch competition. Uh, we both got sick during that month because uh, we were yeah. just working like 16 hours a day. We were practicing for a pitch competition in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And so like that idea of biting off more than you can chew and just doing it, you know, that was, that, was felt it, yeah. that month of February was insane. But we were able to get the Whole Foods order done. We won first place in the pitch competition uh, and, and we made it happen. So. Yeah, we got the delivery done. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. But I think that's kind of sort of where we feel right now. We're going definitely experiencing some growing pains. It's still the two of us. And you quickly realize that there's only 24 hours in a day. You're human. Your body can only take, you know, so much uh, menti mentally and physically. And I think one of the biggest challenges is, is just kind of just being very sort of uh, organized with your time and, and valuing it hardcore and, and prioritizing your time and to the tasks that are really important that really need to get done. Because um, you know we still have to manage the 60 accounts that we have here in Gainesville, and and we visit them on a weekly basis, and make sure they're, that the product's good, that um, there's no you know issues, or the, there's no coffee expiring, or yeah. um, and, and staying on top of that, and showing face, and being there at the same time, trying to fundraise, and and trying to scale the company, and trying to tap into. Uh, you know, another market, which is, you know, that's kegs for us right now. Yeah, I guess. Uh, keep up with the social media, you know? Yeah, I guess where I was kind of going is that I've, one of the things that I've seen in 2019 that I guess I wasn't used to seeing several years ago was that it seems like the default is giving up equity in the company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not saying that that's like the right wrong, wrong thing, yeah. dude. Uh, you know, like, I think that ultimately depends on, on what your goals are, what you're yeah. trying to do, but. You know, I think this podcast, I definitely want this to be educational for mm -hmm. people that are listening. And I just want, I want everybody to think twice about oh, absolutely, giving, yeah. giving, giving mean, up we, equity in their yeah. company. Because I mean, here you're, you're talking about these 60 accounts. I mean, all the sweat equity that you guys have in it right yeah. now and all this hard work and then to, to sell a piece of, I mean. Yeah, and, and that's what we feel, have. Feel free to pitch it right yeah. now. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. how much are you seeking for out what, you know? Like, yeah, and, and that's, I mean, that's what we haven't yet because, you know, we've, um, I'm, a lot of people are doing convertible no notes nowadays, yeah. um, which is a way to sort of postpone your valuation. Um, and so that's what we've been trying first, because you know we're, we are postponing giving up equity, um, like I mentioned. But I think the, the main reason why fundraising makes sense for a company like ours is because it's it's pretty time sensitive. Uh, the cold brew industry is pretty early in its in its growth stage, um, and we need to really like penetrate the market early on if we want to have you know, reach the ambitions that, that we want to have. Um, so I think there's a certain sense of urgency that we have. Um, you know, we can keep going at the pace that we're going and, and we'll be fine, but there's got to be a sort of inflection point at some point and, and that's when we'll, we'll need some capital to, to make it happen. Okay, so how far away is that for you guys? Um, we need... We need to raise it by the end of the year, I okay. would say, yeah. And do you know how much you want to raise? Yeah, we're mm -hmm. trying to raise uh, 500000 Okay, um, and, and what are you gonna do with that money? And so that's going into, uh, our, moving into a, our own production facility, uh, uh, getting semi-automatic production equipment. Um, we already rolled out our first sales rep in South Florida. Uh, so we have a sales rep actively uh, getting accounts for us in South Florida. Um, and so that would be um, allow us to sort of uh, duplicate that and have more sales reps going. He's sort of, sort of an internship slash uh, commission-based internship, but you know, we if we want you know to be able to do that in a in a more uh, effective way, we'd have to compensate people. You know, you can't keep people around forever without compensating them. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, we would start uh, hiring our first. Uh, you know, helping out with production. Um, but the main thing is is marketing and market penetration. Um, you know, we've we've already shown that we can be at Whole Foods, uh, so we can get into Publix, we can get into Target. Um, so Lucky's. Lucky's, we want to roll out uh, an online uh, e-commerce as well. Uh, so just things that, that, you know, we can do ourselves, but it might take us a year, two years. Mm -hmm. um, but if we want to do it a little earlier on and really kind of capitalize on, on the early stages of, of the industry growth, uh, then things that we got to expedite. Do you guys want your stuff in the supermarket chilled? Yes. Yeah, and it has, it has, it has to, to be to cold, be and that's one of the things that we're going to be looking to invest I mean, in that's is a refrigerated tough, right? Because that's got to be truck. super competitive in a, mm -hmm. in a grocery store. Like, yeah. They only have so much real estate in their store for that kind of sure. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know, we, don't, we don't look at ourselves as just competing with cold brew coffee. We look at ourselves as we're competing with kombucha, you know, any tea, even water. You know, we're competing against 
everybody in there. So um, ready to so drink, that's sort of yeah. why it's important for us to, to move quickly, have a sense of urgency and, and create that brand awareness um, as we move forward. And, and that's what we feel that, you know, getting you know, an investment in uh, will help us do that much quicker. And it's, you know, time is definitely of, of the essence. So do you mind, like, what's the, what's the pitch for 500,000? What's the equity stake that you're mm-hmm. giving up? Yeah, so, um, you know, like, like I mentioned earlier, With like the first, or- yeah, first, uh, our first ideal option would be uh, a, a convertible note. Um, if if but we're open to discussing uh, equity as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. that would be something that depending on on what the investor is bringing. If he's if he's trying to invest time, if he has connections in the industry, uh, if he just simply wants to be a, a silent partner and just give us some money and uh, you know have us report to him once in a while. You know, I guess depending on the investor, the the equity would would sort of. Uh, be be more specific to that. Yeah, it'd be yeah. great if you guys could find somebody who's got experience getting that stuff. Yeah, yeah, and, or has those connections already in mm-hmm. oh, those sure. stores. That'd yeah. be great. That that would be the ideal scenario um, mm-hmm. for sure. But you know, we're we're open minded, and you know, at, at this point, we feel like we need the capital to do the things that we want. Um, so we're, you know, anybody that has you know deep pockets and 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 you know, wants to grow with us, then you know, we're open minded for sure. Cool. So. Uh, I don't know, Mike. Yeah, what is the distribution? I mean, you talked about like you're leaving at 2 a.m. to go to Sarasota for a mm-hmm. delivery. You said you've got a statewide contract for Whole Foods. Do you have to, are you delivering your product every time? No, every no, okay. no, yeah, I, yeah. I didn't think no. so. Yeah, I didn't, yeah, no, yeah. no, so, so uh, they work with a distributor called U1FI, and they're based, well, they have different distribution distribution centers, but the one in Florida is in Sarasota. Okay. So basically, we kind of get, get their order together, rent a refrigerated truck, uh, and drive it down and, and to, so the you're delivering to the distribution center. So you're delivering to the distribution center. And then they distribute it to the, to the different Whole Foods as, as they order. And you'll have to do that, whether you get Publix in Lakeland or mm. wherever you're out, you'll plan on delivering most, to the distribution so center. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. UNFI also works with Lucky's, so ideally if, if uh, you know, once we get that Lucky's uh, whole, you know, statewide account, uh, we would be doing the same thing. Uh, but yeah, it was funny because the, the first time we rented the truck, I've never, none of us have driven a 26 foot truck before. No. <laughs> so we're like, so do you have experience driving one of these trucks? We're like, yes. Uh, we had one almost turn over. Just gotta, you know, median. put it in drive. And <laughs> yeah, no, no kidding. So one time we had. Uh, we also didn't know how to drive yeah. one. <laughs> you don't until so, you have so to, we right? Were, we were importing like generators like way back in the day. Oh, and really? Hurricane Katrina hit, wow. and we we loaded up like two hundred generators. Really? Yeah, on like three twenty six foot U hauls or two twenty six foot U hauls in an hour truck yeah. that we had. And big uh, and bulky. And one of our team members like pulled it into the meeting because we were having tr- we were having trouble with the truck and yeah. it kept like, shutting it, off it kept shutting off so like he kept so he drove Water it driving. into the median that had just got was torrentially it, downpoured like, it was on an interstate oh yeah it was on the evacuation route outside of uh, new orleans headed yeah, up to yeah. baton rouge oh, wow and pulls it because he had i mean he had to get it off the, the right. road so it pulls it in but the median was like slushy i mean it was what 45 degree turn yeah. i mean it was like the angle on it was like this and I swear, I'm like, this truck is falling over. Oh, this God. truck is falling over. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> and they had, they stopped, they stopped traffic on both sides? Oh yeah, our, our contact there was a former highway patrolman or something. Like, uh, yeah, it was like the sheriff of the- Yeah, of that really? and so he, he ended up having to, we made the call to him and it wasn't any time at all before he had phoned in the resources and both, both uh, inbound and outbound was shut down wow. so they could write this truck up and we're saying like, oh my God, what are we doing? <laughs> trying to, to do tow like, this truck, trying to tow this truck out of this ditch. Out of this, I'm like, I'm like, this is falling over. This is falling over. This is, I kept repeating to myself, it's gonna fall over. <laughs> Luckily it didn't. It did not, it did not fall over. <laughs> but I would have swore, it was, I, I thought, with the amount of weight that was in that truck yeah, and a lot yeah. of those generators even being up high, I'm like, yeah. dude, that, the weight in that truck, it's gonna, it's it's gonna tip. But yeah, so that was our first 26 foot driving. <laughs> you would have made it on, on YouTube for sure. World star. Oh, <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> this is 2005, so I don't, was right around yeah, the time yeah, of YouTube. Okay. This, is, this yeah. is pre-YouTube, that's how old I am. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, old. geez. I'm not, I'm not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, now well, we, we, we still have the content. Thank you for share. that, Miguel. <laughs> 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 like, now I feel super old. Back in my day. <laughs> Back in my day, we didn't have YouTube. <laughs> Talk about the, the recipe development. I'm interested in that because you went to culinary school and you started perfecting. How long did it take you to perfect it? And what was that process like? Have you changed it since you 
You got it. No, uh, so so we haven't changed it since since we hit the shelves, and, and we don't really have any any plans to. We we love this bean variety. We love the natural characteristics of it. Um, but yeah, it was it was kind of just using you know my experience as as a chef and in the culinary arts and sort of um, tuning it and, and kind of just and, and making sure that the coffee is, is speaking the way it's supposed mm-hmm. to. Uh, you know, from from the time that it sits in the water from the type of water that we use and we experimented with all different types of waters you know distilled uh, you know spring um, you know regular top water different time ratios different coarseness of the bean and then ultimately you know different filtration uh, and then cutting it you know the dilution point of it um, and, and finding a point where uh, it was not too diluted but it you know still had you know nice viscosity on your palate and the notes were were, were nice and, and bright like they're supposed to. Um, and, and so that's sort of where the, my expertise, I guess, comes in. And, and it was not just that, but also kind of just having people taste it mm-hmm. and let us know you know, what they thought um, and, and getting genuine feedback from friends and family um, until the point where, where we felt comfortable. You know, we had the recipe and, and from there, it was kind of just scaling it, you know, to going from one gallon to you know, 80 gallons and, 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 and organizing that. So you, sorry, I was gonna say, so do you always stick with the original product or do you ever see it go into flavored varieties, a decaf variety, anything like that? Sure, uh, yeah, you know, we, um, we're, we're out doing demos, you know, a lot. And one of the things that we realize is that people do want a light and sweet. Um, and so that's something that we have in the back of our heads that, that we would like to uh, spend some time and energy on and, and developing that. Um, and, you know, I think the, um, that's one portion of it, um, and then also kind of just rolling out the kegs a little bit more fully, uh, because we've we've received a lot of demand uh, from you know coffee shops and restaurants. I was like, hey, like I, I love the bottle product, but I sort of want something on on tap, um, and and kind of just listening to those voices and and kind of um, trying to uh, you know serve your customers, mm-hmm. um, and that's why we we felt the need to roll out the kegs a lot sooner than we kind of. Uh, we're ready for, you know, because we are limited. We're working out of commissary kitchen space and, you know, keg steak room and we're paying for that space. You know, another reason why we, we you know, we need investment to move into our own space. Uh, but yeah, we, you know, we have some products in mind. I think the Latin suite and, and the kegs are, are, are the ones that we're gonna move a little bit uh, sooner on. You know, people definitely want that sweetness, you know, with their coffee. Um, but we have some ideas already. Yeah, and, and uh, we, we also just rolled out a nitro uh, brio, which is a completely different bean variety. Um, and it's all it's infused with nitrogen as well, and so that's being sold over at Big Top right now. Okay. okay. Um, so they're helping us out with the kegging process. So they have like an exclusive, uh, you know, trial, you know, with the with the product. Yeah, partnership um, through the partnership. summer. That's cool. um, yeah. So that's going to be more of a chocolatey, cherry, almond, vanilla notes, uh, and then with the with the nitrogen infused. So it's really nice as well. So I think about this from like a retail perspective. Like, how many like you're getting this Whole Foods contract? What are you? doing different size bottles or is it like this one that we've got the eight ounce or? Yeah, so we sell two two sizes right now, bottled uh, with 32 ounce bottle. That is about eight servings. That one, okay. That's that, and then our eight ounce bottle, which you guys have in front of you, and that's about two servings. So do you have any control over, does it get put in like the, the impulse section when you're checking it out? Is it in the cold case with the rest of the, the non, or the coffee products and stuff like that? Like, yeah, so it's it's uh, with the rest, is in the cold brew section. So actually the one in game, so it's great. And I think most Whole Foods have this, they call it the fuel station um, and it's 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 pretty much in there with with the rest of the cold brew coffees because what what I see sometimes is like you go in there and there's only like one bottle say you, you've got one on display and there's a sea of other things it's like how is somebody gonna pick mm-hmm. that one but if you've got a couple of rows of it whether it's different products or just more of the share of the display mm-hmm. then obviously more people are gonna right yeah. I have the same problem in our showroom if we have one type of one scooter sitting there yeah. but then a bunch of other ones no one's ever gonna buy that one that's sitting there right. the oddball, yeah. right so For sure that's kind of what I think of when you're getting into the yeah the retail the, the first step is getting in and then yeah. how do you take over the display right you know? yeah yeah and I mean do you guys have to negotiate that or is it kind of it's still so too early on it's too you know early. We, we don't really get we don't have too much leverage yet we just got we dude, just gotta do as as they say yeah uh, but um, you know that's sort of why we had to sort of rely on the design of the product. So, because if it, if it catches your eye at least for a split second, and it makes you turn it over, and mm-hmm. and and you know, it also it's it's a blessing and a curse. But we're we're priced higher than than most of our competitors, mm-hmm. um, and so in a way that at least triggers some kind of question, like why is this product more expensive? Um, you know, and then you know, and do you, does that help you or hurt you? 
Um, it, I think it helps us. Um, you know, obviously we're going for a premium product. Uh, we're trying to stand out. Um, and so if, if every single cold brew is $4 and ours is $5, then there's the, the fact that we can at least differentiate ourselves in that point, mm-hmm. um, you know, it, I, th- I think it helps. You know, obviously it's gonna sh- shoe out certain uh, customers, clientele, sure. customers, but uh, you know, we're, we're going for, for, for a certain product um, image and, and yeah. so I think that definitely helps. Uh, we've been pretty I, I, happy with the placement too. Uh, usually we have two to three, you know, front facing, uh, you know, we're in their pantogram um, and, and actually uh, because we're local, Whole Foods has a local signage cool. um, next to the bottles that, that helps, helps you know, really entice, really cool. entice yeah. customers. Mm-hmm. And we actually had somebody recently uh, down in, in Miami reach out to us through email um, that tried Bria and, and really enjoyed it. And we were kind of just curious, you know, uh, as to how they they uh, decided to buy Brio, and and um, I think that was definitely one of the the selling points for him was was the local sign um, next to the bottles mm-hmm. for sure. That's how cool. how far out does that radius extend? I mean, do, if you're in Florida, do you get that local designation, or do you have to be probably kind of, just in Florida? Probably in Florida, yeah. I would assume so. Um, I'm not really sure how how far. Yeah. You know. Well, interesting. That's it. It's cool yeah, that they yeah. have that, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, definitely, I, I'm definitely the helps. same way. Like, if I yeah. go to Whole Foods, like, I, or really anywhere, mm-hmm. it's like if there's a local option next to what I, that's that's the one I'm going for. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. I think a lot of people kind of are starting to have that mindset mm-hmm. more and more. Mm-hmm. So it definitely plays into your. Yeah, you your see that Publix yeah. now too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say that I agree with you on the pricing mm-hmm. thing. I think you know pricing. I mean, we we talked about this um, just a couple weeks ago when we had we had legacy events. You weren't here for that one. No. <laughs> so, apparently, I missed a really good podcast. So check out the legacy, we legacy events. events podcast. But we were talking about we were talking about pricing okay. and how like price can really set the kind mm-hmm. the kind of customer that comes mm-hmm. to you and and just and cookie cash too. We were talking about. Oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Same thing. Yeah, so. Even and even at like a place like Lucky's where you know usually they have really good discounts there and and things are priced a little bit more affordable. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've been able to to, to compete. Uh, pretty well. It's cool, man. Yeah, yeah. it's funny. At, at Lucky's, they have uh, their their house brand of cold brew, which is the same size, thirty two ounce, uh, and selling for four ninety nine, and ours is fifteen ninety nine. So three times three times the price of their house brand, right wow. next to each other. Oh, yeah, we so got a price. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's yeah, you got to definitely build build value. And that's what you know, and that's what you have to deliver on the taste too, you know, which is of course. You know, for us super consistent, super detail oriented. Uh, you well, know, I mean, look, the quality of the product has got to be there because mm-hmm, if they exactly. buy it one time it and they deliver. don't like it, they're mm-hmm. never buying it again. Exactly. So. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't sound like you. I mean, at least from this conversation, that you guys haven't reached profitability yet. Mm-mm. Okay. Like, do you, how long? I mean, based on your current track, do you project that? Being uh, out? Yeah. So I think we were saying quarter quarter one of quarter and either end of 2020 or beginning of 2021 21. okay yeah. yeah yeah so and then That's our goal yeah have you guys had any problems with you know getting a purchase order from you know a company like whole foods and not being able to meet it uh mm-hmm. no i think the first one was super daunting uh but you know we, we kind of just communicated with them and and we're realistic we're like hey we need i think this much time to fulfill it you know just in terms of, of the quality, we, you know, our coffee is super fresh. We can't just, you know, um, you know, produce it, um, and we have certain standards. So we I think we gave them like a yeah, six or, week or, out, and they or, were like, yeah, originally, five. originally they wanted it in a week, sure. and we're like, that's not, that's yeah. not yeah, 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 yeah. like we gotta call suppliers, like we gotta expedite everything. Um, so we're like, can we do six weeks? And they were like, let's do four. I was like, all right, yeah. where it is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, at that point, I mean, it's just... good that you still said yes. And this is yes. actually, oh, this is sure. a lesson that I've like talked about with plenty of entrepreneurs before is that you always get the deal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you figure it all out later. And yeah. even right. that, even, you know, we spent a couple hours just seeing like, how can we make it happen in a week, you know, before we said anything? We're like, yes, absolutely. And then after we realized like, it it's was not happening, you yeah. Know, just, by the time we get our, we didn't coffee. have that much bottles. Yeah, we didn't, ha- we didn't. We didn't have any label, like yeah. enough labels. You know, no. like we had. We didn't ha- we have to order basically everything. Everything. Right. We didn't yeah. keep that much. You know, raw. And it also account for the fact that we're using a commissary kitchen space, so we have to communicate. You know, with, with them. The, yeah. yeah, with them. And say, hey, you know, yeah. so we had a meeting with them. Like, all right, guys, we're basically startup we're life, baby. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so it's definitely life. stressful. You know, it was a, it was a great feeling uh, for sure. But we're like. 
like definitely like the the anxiety sort of that yeah. just, just to kind of put it into perspective you know we received that order in february and that order was more coffee than we had brewed and bottled our the whole, the whole existence year. of brio yeah. before that yes so it was uh, it was scary. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we're like, are we any... excited? Are we scared? Are we excited? Are we scared? Yeah. I wouldn't have any capital to to be able to, to order all the things we needed, yeah. you know, because our cash flow was pretty small. So we're like, all right, so we need all this stuff. We have no money. Um, so it was definitely a freak out moment where we started calling friends and family, like, you know, we need at least this much to be able to fulfill this order. Uh, you yeah. know, which definitely at that point it's a little easier because you already have the invoice, you know, in hand. Um, but yeah, we had, yeah, we, had we, our, we talked to banks too. Yeah, uh, you know whatever option. And the issue with the banks is that you kind of have you got to have some kind of track history already. Yeah, like in two to three years, um, and then that's a long process too because you have to fill all the paperwork. Um, you know, go through your taxes, and so we're like, we don't have we don't have time. You know, we need money yeah. yesterday. We don't. You know, we can't sit down focus on this. We got to focus on production. So yeah. Um, so I think yeah. we we had a, we raised about fifty for that just for that production, and then we won the startup challenge, which was another ten. So everything and that everything was money already out. spent. Yeah. Oh yeah, when we got that, we're like, so we have they- to win this. We have no choice. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I like this. that commitment though. It kind of reminds me of the Anheuser Anheuser Busch deal. Yeah. We did a deal with Anheuser Busch oh, really? back in the day, where oh. like the local distributor uh, Stephen Burkhart, super nice guy. Uh, kind of went around to all the dealers here and was just looking to do like a, a deal with a local with mm-hmm. the local scooter company. You know, buy, I think it was like 15 scooters is kind of like what it started out mm-hmm. with and they were just gonna do this massive giveaway in Gainesville. Oh really? And it turned, it turned into 50 scooters that year between Gainesville and Tallahassee, which, wow. was, which, is man, which was manageable. Yeah, was, yeah. Like, I mean, that was manageable. And, um, and we did really, really like it was. It was a great little campaign. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess he got a call from Anheuser Busch in St. Louis, Missouri, asking about that campaign. Saying, "Hey, like, how did that? Yeah, <laughs> how did that whole scooter thing go?" <laughs> and so he gave me a heads up. He called me. He's like, "Hey, just heads up, like." Anheuser Busch in St. Louis, Missouri, might call you. Yeah. <laughs> and so and so they did, uh, and and they were like, "Yeah, you know, we heard a lot of great things about the campaign. Just wanted to see if, you know, if you could." if we could do something yeah, I'm like, yeah, sure. He's like, so we want to buy 250 scooters. And like, yeah, it was like, four, it was like 14, <laughs> it was like across 14 different markets and then pretty much, mainly the SEC, but it was college markets. Okay. And um, they're, like, they're like, you know, can you do it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> No problem. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I'm like, oh, like, done. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. done. Yeah. <laughs> no, no problem. But that wasn't the scary part. The scary part That's was, it. well, so we want you to like order the scooters, get them, get them here, get them shipped out to our distributors. And 120 days later, well, yeah, we'll pay you. Oh, uh, yeah. That's how, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, that you know, hurts. off a of purchase order. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, how am I, gonna, where am I going to get this money? Yeah. We we're talking like, yeah. It was like a couple hundred thousand dollars. Oh, I mean, yeah, it was, yeah, it was sure. a lot of money. Yeah, and pressure's on. And so, so you know, they're asking. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, sure, no problem. Hang up the phone. Start freaking out. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, where am I gonna get this money? I start calling like, yeah. our, we have we have private investor people. I mean, it was private loans. Yeah. yeah. And so I start ca- calling these you know friends and family that have given us these private loans. Hey, can I borrow two hundred yeah. <laughs> thousand dollars? And I mean, I was freaking out. But I mean, like. If I would have been, this is the kind of reflecting about. I tell everybody, I'm like, dude, if I would have been like, oh, let me think I'm about not it. So sure, yeah. let me think about it. I got to figure yeah. out where I'm gonna get the money. Ah, like, you know, if uh, I would have been off, hesitating yeah. on yeah. any of that, I would have lost, lost the deal. Yeah. Yeah. I would have yeah. lost the deal. They would have gone somewhere else. Hey, figure it out. You figure it out. Off yeah. So I hung up the phone yeah. and I and I figured it out. And we actually got the manufacturer. Or I got our distributor to get the manufacturer to front the order on the PO. Oh, nice. There it is. And, uh, and we were able to make it work. There but it is. yeah, it was great. I mean, this was 2008. Yeah. This is like. Uh, it helps out, it was like was a. It? 2009, 2009. Oh, really? It was like 2009. Nice. So. Um, it helps out it was like a reputable person ordering the, the scooters and. Yeah, right. yeah. You know, I mean, that, you know that money's good for Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I had no <laughs> doubt that. You gotta figure it out in the meantime. Yeah, I like, no, I, do I gotta stop yeah. eating for it? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> I had no, I, no doubt that anheuser Bush was gonna pay. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, but you gotta survive in the meantime, yeah. Was, I mean, I, that's probably the only reason we were able to to get the manufacturer to do it on the PO right. is because like, dude, this is Anheuser-Busch. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know? 
uh, so but like it was a, a really pop shop it was a really really cool experience but I just know that if we would have like really been kind of mm-hmm. like oh wishy washy uh, hesitated on it that we would have lost the deal right sure. so um, so like looking towards like growth let's let's just hypothetically say like you you raise this money Mm -hmm. and you got the money that you need for your facility and you know brio's taking out like are you gonna be able to stay in gainesville or do you want to you want to yeah Yeah, we want to stay in gainesville we love we love gainesville um and our parents live you know would you have to build something or would you be able to to buy something that already exists do you know uh for phase phase two we'd be able to get into you know into we're looking at like two to three thousand square feet for phase two um and then phase three would be, you know, probably three, four, four years down the line. Um, and then for that, we'd probably have to get get something on the outskirts of town or, you know, yeah. looking a little Depending bit Depending on where we forward, are, but you know. We've, we've, we've thought about it, um, you know. It's because we're, we're, you know, we're focusing on distribution. We don't have to be in prime real estate, you know, so we'll, we'll consider, we definitely want to stay in Gainesville for sure. Um, but, you know, we don't have to be prime, prime yeah. you know, location. So. Okay, so. What would help you right now? You just need the connections to to raise this money and work out a deal and get to five hundred thousand by the end of the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you raised any of that yet, or? Uh, no. So we've we've got conversations uh, started. Um, you know, we're, we're, take, we're taking our time with it. Uh, we've we've sort of learned lessons in the past already. When you know you, you bite on things too quick, or you know not don't think about things, or um, you know there there's. You know, we've we've lost out on several things, but we've had better things happen. So it's uh, just kind of like learning how to trust your gut instinct and learning how to like not be like so frantic and rushing on on certain things. And uh, and so that's the way it's been. You know, on on signing a, a lease for a new space. You know, we've sort of been taking our time, but you know, obviously being on top of it, but uh, making sure that we're not committing because anything, any kind of commitments we make, they're you know, we're, we're, we're yeah. yeah, we're we're making commitments for for five years. You know, so the the energy's got to be right. The people's got to be the, the people have to be right. Um, so that's that's sort of priority for us. And, and it's like you mentioned, it's it's our baby. You know, it's our lives. We you know we're we're not just business partners. We're roommates. So we're talking about Brio twenty four seven, and so we want to make smart decisions that put Brio in the in the best uh, position possible and. And you know, it's very. Uh, there's definitely a little bit of reluctancy, you know, to 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 give away a piece of of, of the pie. They worked so hard uh, to build, and so we, we definitely want to take our time, be smart. Um, you know, we have. Well, just make sure it's worth it. Yeah, yeah make sure it's you worth know, like, it, and and not just that. You know, Gainesville has, has a great group of mentors here. I think that's oh one gosh, of the yes. main reasons. Like Gainesville is so special that the support system has been tremendous, and and we've been fortunate to to tap in, in, into that network and. You know where we have a question about you know invest you know investors and um, people have been just very willing to kind of open their doors and 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 hear us out you know um, and yeah so we're definitely gonna take our time with that and there's definitely a sense of urgency always but we want to make smart you know decisions. Cool. Yeah, but we've we sort of learned to survive because originally we we're trying to raise the money by December of last year. We're like we gotta have the money by then, but you know we made it happen so far. So that's why we sort of learned to kind of like. You know, we'll, we'll figure it out. You know, when when it happens, it'll happen. Look, uh, I mean, sales trump all. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, if if you're out selling, yeah, and you're getting more and more and more and more and more and more deals. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. it makes it more attractive, right? Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's gonna get that. That's you know, talking about leverage, mm-hmm. like results matter. Yeah, exactly. I don't care what the business is. Results yeah, for matter. Sure. Yeah, and and that's that's what we're trying to do now. Just keep executing. Keep you know, getting getting ourselves up, getting more accounts and until we absolutely can't no more and we're like, all right. <laughs> cool. Well, yeah. tell everybody where they can, where they can, you know, find you guys online, like, yeah. where, like social media, give us all your contact yeah, for sure. info. So for anybody outside of Florida or that lives in, in, in a place in Florida that doesn't have a Whole Foods, uh, they can visit our website. We've got both the eight ounce and the 32 ounce bottles on for sale, as well as our shirts that we brought and uh, the little Libby glasses, we, we, they sell those online. We sell those online. <laughs> There's mm-hmm. not that yet, it's we. Um, this little guy right here? Yeah, this little yep. guys, yeah. Um, and This yeah. makes me feel like I'm drinking a premium coffee when you yeah. put it in this thing. That's, yeah. yeah, that's I the like goal. It. It makes I it like so it. that you sip on it, you know, it's, it's enjoyable. That's a big top, that's where they sell the nitro. Uh, mm-hmm. So it's, it, it's served on, in that glass. Uh, but yeah, so uh, there's about 28 Whole Foods in the state of Florida. Uh, ranging from Tallahassee, obviously, to South Florida. 
Uh, so any Whole Foods will carry will carry Brio. Uh, and then in Gainesville, to all the Gainesville peeps, we're at uh, Ward Supermarket, Lucky Supermarket, Whole Foods, uh, most of your bakeries in town, so Sweet Buns, Upper Crust, Dolce Vita, a lot of your awesome restaurants, uh, especially the ones owned by locally, uh, by local people, uh, you know, downtown, you got Oak, Leonardo's, uh, Daily Green, Emiliano's, uh, Emiliano's. Yeah, most places downtown carry um, Brio. Yeah, cool. uh, a lot of yeah. the chevrons, yeah. And, and we ship nationwide, so you know, we actually added uh, a case, so now we ship by the case. Um, and we've shipped all the way, you know, New York pretty regularly, and, and West Coast, Washington. And that's shipping cold. Denver. Or, so we actually ship it the day that it's that it's brewed. Yeah. Wow. So we produce it and we ship it, and it gets there usually around two two days, two to three days. Yeah. Well, um, if somebody wants to contact you about investing, you guys want to put an email address out there or something? Or? Yeah, yeah, they can uh, reach out to info at briocoldbrew.com. Mm-hmm. That's info at briocoldbrew.com. Same cool. thing for the Instagrams at Brio Cold Brew Coffee. Or no, just real cold, bro. So oh, it, it, dude, guys, this was fascinating. This yeah. was very cool. Best yeah. of luck. Thank you. I Thank look you. forward. I look forward to uh, having you back in a few years and like yeah, see what happens. See, yeah, <laughs> I mean that's the fun part about yeah. this for me is like I'm like ah, I can't wait to have people back and yeah, yeah, yeah. see like oh they have multi million dollar businesses now or you know yeah. or they're starting failures. something else. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but but I'm re- you know like it's that's that's exciting yeah. you know yeah. like it, life life happens things oh, yeah, happen. like sure. I'm, I'm excited like the product is is fantastic i've Thank seen you. you guys out hustling mm-hmm. i mean i remember the first time yeah, i right. met you yeah. like walked yeah. in here oh, yeah, with, with a bottle with a bottle yeah yeah back, yep. backpack was bottle Angela was like yo was like hey let me like let you try this and i mean that i mean if you have that kind of work ethic you're you're gonna make it like yeah. it's the the perseverance is what matters right, right? And so just like just keep keep digging guys right. like I'm super proud of you guys I'm proud to know you guys so Thank I'm excited you. just uh you know if the, the things grow just do promise me you'll do whatever you can to stay here in Gainesville oh I mean we're reaching we're reaching a time like it's funny like we've over and over and over had multiple conversations and I think you know Gainesville is great as a bootstrap you know community where people can like get mm-hmm. get off the ground but then they gotta leave mm-hmm. yeah. you know and it's like man like i don't want anybody to leave mm-hmm. i want to see what we can do to keep them here so mm-hmm. if i mean if you reach that stage and you're thinking like you have to leave then like let's have a conversation first yeah, you know yeah. like i want i want to do what i can to keep more companies yeah, we don't, we don't, we don't want to we love yeah. gainesville we want to build a company that has, offers a lot of value to gainesville we're inspired by gatorade and and this is home you know our parents are just you know 30 minutes away yeah. like i love gainesville we've cool. been here for three and a half years now and um out of all places that i've lived like i i feel at home Awesome. You know. Sure. There it is. This is this is great. Yep. Awesome. Right, any last yeah, thanks, minute thanks for words? having us. Safe for side hustle. <laughs> have a good have a good back to school time. Oh, thank time. you. Um, I might need like to crush it. it's place August. a keg order for some Brio. There it is. <laughs> Make sure yeah. I get through August. But. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, get, sure. the, get through August. So, so. we have the, extends. Yep. Yeah. We can tell you guys more details on that, but you know, I think we mentioned a nitro and then we have the, the still uh, bottled product. Yeah, Coffee I just finished sure. my two servings. There it is. Yeah, there it's all right. right. gone. I'm How are you guys feeling over there? I feel great. <laughs> Wired for the rest of the day. So, all right, everybody. Well, this is the WHOA GNV Podcast, the podcast bringing you businesses and individuals that make you go. Whoa! Whoa. Whoa. There it we is. will there see it is. you <laughs> later. Bye. Awesome. There it is.